My name is Avinash Chowdhury. I am a grade four student at Park Meadow School. Welcome to my Crystal Radio presentation. This is the board I made. Some people might ask why a crystal radio. Well, I mostly chose it because it best fits my problem and it looked more challenging than a foxhole radio design. The background research featured that I had a stab circuits kit, but I wanted to see how a real circuit works without external power, such as batteries or a plug-in. I found a crystal radio tutorial on YouTube from Rims.org. I also found out that crystal radios were only used for 18 years from 1902 to 1920 because the next model of a radio used a vacuum tube. Another radio is a foxhole radio, which is a radio that does not have neither a crystal nor an external power source, or even a diode. The Foxhole Radio was built during World War II. Entertain the soldiers in the trenches. Materials you will need for each individual part are listed down below. Okay, so this is the first part of the procedure in how to make the Crystal Radio. So to, right now we're going to make a capacitor. You'll need two pieces of industry wire with the tips, both ends, loose with the wire. Then we just used pliers to cut the industry off the insulated part and you'll need a tube, masking tape, two 15 by 15 aluminum foil squares, CM, and one 18 by 18 CM piece of paper. And that's about it. So first you're gonna take one of your squares, we're gonna put it right around the capacitor. Tape it right here and tape the edges to me. I'll show you what that looks like. So first take a piece of mask. And this is the first part. Now what you're going to do is you're going to tape this square sheet right to this. So after taping everything, it should look sort of like this. So now we're going to have it aluminum side facing up. And what we're going to do is we're going to make another two highlights, just so it doesn't fall apart, you know. And then after you've done that, this is basically your capacitor. So all you're going to have to do is you take this paper part and put it on here. And then what is going to happen is you change the volume, you're just going to move the capacitor like this. Okay, so this is the second part of what you will need to do for the procedure. And this is the coil. You have to have magnet wire. Like I was talking about magnetic inductance. So you have to have magnet wire. And you need some masking tape. Scissors to cut the tube when you're done winding. Because everybody's magnet wire has different sizes. I'm not sure if we'll need these, but pliers to probably cut the little wire later. But without that, without further ado, let's get started. So I'm just going to see if I can take a piece of masking tape and you just take it how long you think your coil is going to be. For me, I'm going to think about from the top to here maybe. That's not as long as it. Okay, this is, this is really long honestly. And then this time I'm going to place one more piece the same size or maybe even a bit more. And then you're going to place it from here, all the way to here. Now the reason I said more is so you can fold back the tape, so you can peel it back later. So that you can just take it and peel it like that. So for this piece, we're just going to fold it. Now, take your magnet wire, unwind it a bit. I have some tape on mine, but that's fine. Um, okay, so you want to take this unwind it apart. And start a little bit from the top, and depending on if you're left-handed or right-handed, you can start winding. So for this first time, we're going to do about 25 turns. Okay, so I have just done 25 turns, and what you're going to do is on your 25th, take the wire, make sure it's tight, peel back tape, take this end, and then this end is the end we're going to tape it so you can't see it. And then here we're going to just cut it with pliers or really anything. And leave that there. Also,
also make sure there's pretty much some space where you can connect stuff to from this. And then again, if you don't have space, just take some more coil wire and you can tie it around your tank space for a longer wire to attach it. I'll show you what I mean later. Okay. Now, 90 turns. Okay. Now we're on to the last part of the procedure in the clear scheme. It's connecting. So far we just have this capacitor and this coil. So the first thing you're gonna make is this tube. All you need is this paper clip. You wanna bend it out and make a loop here so you can pin it here. And this is gonna be what's touching the coil, like this. And then just put it on a wood block and mount it to the thing, about four centimeters away. And then on the coil, sand the top of it with sandpaper. And now we have to take the grounding wire. This is tin copper coated wire and put it. Okay, now we're in the furnace room and we have this copper pipe. If you don't have one of these, you can just put a one meter stick down to the ground or you can use a fence probably. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take our grounding wire. I'm gonna knot it. Now we're back here, and the next piece is the exact opposite of the ground wire. It's an antenna. So we're gonna hook up the antenna to a coil wire that's sticking out. And you want to have about a 10 meter in total. So we just have two five meters connected together like this. Now we're up here and we've tied our two antenna to this now. This is our antenna, it's hooked all the way up there. And now we need a diode, this has to be a germanium diode, and 34. And there's, you'll see a gray stripe right here. So you wanna put it facing towards you or facing down. Take one little piece of tape and secure it. And do the same for the other side. Make sure it's little pieces of tape so you can still attach the wires to stuff. And this is basically the finished setup, except if you wanted to, this is the time to add resistors, if you have any, but right now I'm not gonna add any. And now on to connecting. So for the first connecting part, you wanna take an alligator clip, take this wire we attached to the capacitor. This is one foot wire, this is for the um, parts bearer. And then you just wanna attach it to the coil. Like that. And then attach it to the grounding wire. Now you're gonna take the next clip and we have so many clips right now. And clip these two together and clip the other end to the top of the diode wire. Now we need a crystal earpiece. It has to be, it has to have a piece of electric crystal inside of it. Do is take this clip over here we're gonna attach this diode wire right here. Attach it to one of the sides of the earpiece. And now you want to take another clip, attach onto the earpiece, attach the next one to the grounding wire. I just need to make this one last clip. Clip it from the tuner over the grounding wire. And the reason we have a tuner is this is a tunable crystal right here. So you can go from like this and see if you can tune into the station. 
Now I'm going to be showing you two tables so you know all the parts of the crystal radio. This is figure one, transformer with earbuds. This actually worked the worst out of all of our figures because this one didn't work at all. So I'm not going to say much more about it. This is figure two. This one gave us some static. For this one, we used a piezoelectric buzzer, a.k.a. a piezoelectric alarm. And it gave us a little bit of static because of the piezoelectric crystal inside of it. This is figure three. This is the original crystal radio that we didn't upgrade. And this one actually gave us quite a bit of ticking. This is figure four, diode switch with grounding wire. This one actually helped a lot and gave us such a loud ticking. And finally, this is figure five. This figure worked the best out of all of them because we added a 10,000 ohm resistor with the earpiece and it actually just helps the diode do its job. These are the results and dates on how each figure worked. Okay, now I'm going to show you how the crystal radio works by this diode. So the first thing, the first part is this antenna right here. The top part of the antenna catches the radio waves that go to the ground and converts them into electrons because radio waves are like lightning so they want to go to the ground so the electrons go through the setup into this coil and what the coil does is it uses something called magnetic inductance which it's like when your hand opens the electrons flow over to the next coil it has to be magnet wire to do magnetic inductance then it's going to start to go through the grounding wire, but then it's going to take a turn over here. And then it's not going to go through up here yet, but it's going to meet this capacitor. And what the capacitor does is this part is foil, and this part is paper, and this part is another piece of foil. So you can move this part this way and this way, so you can make it louder or softer. And then the electron will go over here into the earpiece. But this diode helps the electrons go into the earpiece because otherwise all the electrons will get jumbled up in one part of the earpiece. But what the diode does is all the electrons are flowing, they meet the capacitor, and then the diode makes one of them stop, one goes, through the diode. One stop, one goes. One stop, one goes. And then all of those separately go back into the coil. They go up and around. The tuner helps you tune into the one station of the electrons and the radio waves. It goes down here, goes back here, back into the ground, over and over. The conclusion is, the crystal radio picked up signals without any external power source, but it needed several improvements to enhance reception. Acknowledgements go to Wikipedia links for crystal radio and foxhole radio. Rims.org, who taught me how to build a crystal radio and how the crystal radio works. And my family for buying everything.